Thank you for joining us with Pool Elementary and today we'll be changing out a stay right motor and pump seal and if you learn anything from our video make sure you hit that like button and if you have any questions leave a comment and I'll get back to you usually within 24 hours. Let's dive in. The tools you're going to need to change out this motor and pump seal on a stay right P2R pump is some silicone, I got some o-ring lube, a 7 16th wrench to lock the shaft, a quarter inch nut driver, a pair of wire strippers, the actual seal, um, the Stay Right P2Rs uh, is usually a PS200 US seal. Um, other motors you'll have to check by the motor model number, uh, they could be a 100 or a 201. Uh, flathead screwdriver, 9 16th socket, a pair of wire cutters, and I like to have some channel locks. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our lock ring off, which basically holds our motor and motor plate to the actual wet end of the pump. So basically they're either going to have a handle that you can twist off or they're just going to have like a nut that goes over a bolt right here. With our handle off or our nut off, we can take this off and then you're just going to use a little screwdriver and kind of pry it apart. And this ring basically just clamps down over top these two notches here and squeezes it together as you tighten it. So in between this, there's going to be a gasket. So with this, we'll take these two uh, bolts out that are connecting it to the stand itself. So once we've got these two bottom 9 16 bolts out, the motor should just come off the stand. And like I said, um, sometimes you don't have to do this if they're not bolted to the ground, but this one is. Like so. Once we've got this apart, we can see our diffuser is right here. And it looks like we're just going to use a regular screwdriver to loosen up these five screws and that should come off giving us access to our impeller. Once that's off, we're gonna have to lock our motor shaft to uh, spin our impeller off. You're definitely gonna wanna have a quarter inch nut driver. It just makes these back motor plate caps so much easier to take off. So once we get our two screws loosened up on our motor cap, that motor cap should just come off if you do it evenly. Reveal on the back of the motor. So in order to get that impeller off of there, there's a shaft that comes out on the back of this motor. Sometimes on the uh, older motors or different motors, um, the actual shaft is accessible, so you can put a wrench on it, or sometimes a big flathead screwdriver. But in this case, to get to this shaft, to spin that um, impeller off, we're gonna have to take this centrifugal switch off, which basically is the, piece cover in the shaft that kind of looks like a V and by taking that off now we can get a 7 16 wrench so basically once that 7 16 wrench is locked onto that motor shaft we'll be able to spin our impeller off without the shaft moving with our standard screwdriver we're going to take off the diffuser plate with the diffuser off and all Five of those screws removed. We have full access to the impeller. With our 7 16 inch wrench locked onto the shaft, we should be able to spin this right off. If you can't spin it off by hand, counterclockwise, then I suggest using a pair of channel locks and just lightly squeeze on it. And it should come right off. If the uh, impeller is damaged on it or whatnot, usually they'll have uh, an actual part number right on them. Upon moving the impeller, as you can see, we have the shaft seal, which is uh, basically locked onto the uh, motor shaft itself. So we'll basically have to take that off. Sometimes they're pretty, they're on there pretty good. So I like to use a pair of channel locks and just kind of work that off. So sometimes these are a bugger to get off. This one was definitely a bugger. I actually had to break it to get it off of that shaft. 
and that's just because the motor's been running so hot and it's just it was just locked on there so next step is to take this motor plate off so once our impeller is off and we've pulled that pump seal off the shaft we're going to take the two remaining uh, 9 16 bolts out of the back where the motor is connected to the motor plate Once your motor plate's free from the motor, you just need to tap the rest of the pump seal that's remaining out with the screwdriver from the back side of the motor plate. If your pump is pre-1998, you're going to have this seal plate insert. It's either copper or stainless steel. And so while trying to get your pump seal out, try not to damage this part. And if you do, here's the part number. It's a J3-2. Before disconnecting the power to the old motor, I like to take note or a picture with my phone of how everything's wired up just in case I have any questions later. And we want to be careful with everything because we're going to save all the hardware from the conduit to install on our new motor. If you're still unsure of what the voltage going to your pool pump is and you don't have a voltage meter, uh, if the actual breaker going to the motor is a single breaker, like the one my finger's touching, it's normally 115 volts. If it's two breakers connected together, like the ones that my fingers are touching in the pictures, then normally it's 230 volts. So after running our wire through our motor wire hole, we have our two hots and our ground. So we're going to attach our two hots. And I like to take these mounting screws out and then if your wire is braided like what I'm using sometimes I'll just take my screwdriver and just push that braid underneath the actual tightening screw here and tighten it down firmly. So once our two hots are screwed down tightly. If you're wiring off of a single breaker which is 115 volts, you're going to have one hot and one common which is normally white instead of two hots. And on this Sentry motor that I'm wiring here, uh, the actual common, which was white, would have gone to the terminal L2, and the hot lead would have went to L1. There's usually always a diagram on the outside casing of the motor to help you wire up the motor to 115. Last thing we want to do is attach our ground wire. I like to cut off a fresh piece. When we're wiring these up, I like to curl my copper so it's curling around the screw to the right. As I'm tightening it down, it actually will pull the wire in rather than push it out. And let me take your screw and just make sure it's going to fit in there. quarter inch in it guy we'll just tighten it down with both of our hots tightened down and our ground attached which is green um, basically there's a little dial here just like our AO Smith motor this is the sentry that we installed and you just want to make sure that this dial is set on the right voltage so you can either turn it so that way there's 230 or you can turn it counterclockwise and then it'll say 115 so this being one 230 we're going to turn it so it says 230 on there and that motor's wired so from there we're going to have to get our 7 16 wrench back on this shaft also so we can tighten down the impeller without the shaft spinning so we're going to take this central fugal switch off which is this v-shaped switch so now that that shaft is locked we can screw on our impeller most of your stay right pumps either take the 200 a 201 or some of them take a 100 
Um, you're gonna have to look up your model number on your pump to see exactly which one they are. There's so many different Steerite pumps that I, I can't guess or tell you exactly which one you're gonna have to use. With our motor plate, the first part of the pump seal we're gonna put in is this part with the white surface, the ceramic surface. And basically this is just gonna push right in to the center hole of the pump plate. I like to put some o-ring lube around the actual rubber bushing of this or you can put a light layer of silicone inside of the actual pump plate deal just to seal it up good. Just make sure you don't get any on the actual white ceramic surface. If it does, um, usually I just use some paper towels to get it off as soon as possible. Okay. We'll just push it on in the center. I usually use the back of a screwdriver to get it to seat solid. So with that seated in there, we can move on to our next step. With that, remember that basically our model number and this notch right here is gonna go on the top of the motor also. So this will just slide in like so. And then we're gonna take our other part of our pump seal and um, basically always um, the weight white ceramic side always goes in touch with this uh, black outer ceramic piece right here so this metal side right here with this bushing in it always goes away from the ceramic plug on the other one so out of your four bolts that you took out of this motor plate uh, it's gonna be the short ones that go on the top then the long ones go on the bottom because they have to go through the motor rack and then into the motor plate And that's it. We're not going to go extremely tight until we get those bottom ones in also. So with that tight, we can take our uh, pump seal, the other half, and uh, basically the side with the metal surface and this rubber bushing right here is going to go outward. And this side with the dark ceramic uh, piece right here is going to go up against the other white ceramic like so and then we're just going to twist our impeller back on clockwise like so and that's it you just want that good and hand tight so after we got our impeller on hand tight and we've taken our 7 16 wrench off of the back of the motor shaft we can put our diffuser back on uh, noting that when we took it off the uh, actual part number for the diffuser was on the bottom so we'll just go ahead and put it on the same way we found it and we'll just take our screwdriver and tighten these down so with our diffuser back on i now uh just use some regular uh o-ring lubricant this one's for pools and i like to put some lubricant on this diffuser gasket that goes around here and then our main housing gasket that goes in between the motor plate diffuser and then the wet end of the pump. I like to throw a little lube on that also, just to make sure we get a good seal and the O-ring doesn't dry out. So I'll put that main housing gasket back in, like so, and. It kind of tries to be a bugger sometimes and wants to fall out. If you find that it's fallen out too much and you can't get it to stay in, sometimes I'll just put a bead of silicone behind it and that should make it stick in there until you get this part back into that wet end. So before we go ahead and try to slip this back into the wet end, I'm going to take one more step and I'm going to put the back of the motor back together here. So we've taken off the centrifugal switch to access the shaft to tighten down the impeller. So we'll grab our screw that we have set aside and we'll put that back together. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little guide uh, knob down there too to center it. And it should be just centered right over. There's a little nub on the back of this piece that covers up the shaft. And we just want to tighten that down. Nice and snug. 
Remember, all this stuff is plastic, so if you go He-Man on it, you're gonna probably snap something. Just want it nice and tight. So, double checking everything. Power wires are hooked up, ground's hooked up, nothing's close to each other. Um, we've got it set at 2.30. Uh, here we can put on our back cap, aligning our power wire with the slot, and just slipping it on. Definitely highly recommend putting some silicone in there to hold your O-ring in, or your main housing gasket. Because wrestling this thing around and then trying to get this clip back on, that thing tends to like to fall out. And it just sucks when you get this clip all the way back on and go fire your motor up and that, that gasket moved and you're screwed. So what I also do is sometimes I'll feed this clamp ring inside here. So that way it's easier to slip in there. So put that siliconed up. We'll make sure label for our pump models on the top and I'll try to work this thing in here and there she goes she pops in and it's just a matter of lining up our motor uh, pump mount to the floor with the bolts on the bottom of that motor plate and then putting in our longer bolts we have with the washers so they'll feed through like so and we'll tighten those down and on all these you just want to go snug and then quarter turn you don't want to ha tighten them down so far where they're digging into the plastic take a locking ring like so and that's it you want to get up underneath it and that's it this actual seam on the bottom should be directly underneath of the motor and the, the pump and then this should come up on the side, the actual tightening mechanism. So that's kind of it. You're going to have to squeeze the motor in to get this lock ring into position. Like so. And that's it. You want to make sure that this outside rim is going around the back motor plate to the motor. And the front side's going around the wet end plate. And you should know that basically when you have this on properly, your threads that come up for your lock handle to screw down on should be pretty easy to actually get started threading. Spin her down till she's snug. Bang on the outside of the actual ring. Like so. I usually use a plastic screwdriver. But banging this makes it seat better. And you'll be surprised when you're tightening this down and it started getting stiff. It'll actually turn, you know, three, three to five times with ease. Because it's helping that thing seat down tighter. It's giving your seal a lot tighter seal. And once again, we got some easy turns. And we'll do it, we'll repeat this three to four times. Or until when we go to turn it, it's still stiff. So now it's starting to get pretty tight. All right, everything's back together. Um, we're going to put a little bit of uh, O-ring lubrication on this lid gasket. We're going to fill this pump up with water and we're going to go ahead and prime it up and test it out. You can see she primed right up. So, this is where we're going to get down here. And you're going to want to check to make sure that this lock collar isn't leaking anywhere. And we've got nothing, it's dry. And then basically that pump seal that you put in, there shouldn't be any water behind the actual motor itself. So with that dry, and dry underneath the lock collar, I'd say it's a pretty successful install.